I don't think people understand just how ingenious ancient heating really was. Before we dive in, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss out on more fascinating history and survival tips. Long before electricity, gas, or even basic insulation, humans faced winters that could kill in a single night. Entire civilizations thrived in freezing climates with nothing but fire, stone, and an understanding of heat that we are only now beginning to fully appreciate. The knowledge our ancestors developed wasn't just survival. It was comfort engineered at a level we often overlook today. For those of us who care about history, survival, and practical skills, these systems aren't relics. They are lessons in efficiency, resilience, and sustainable living. In this video, we are going to uncover the lost heating techniques of the past, from the grandeur of Roman villas to the homes of Korean peasants, from Chinese survival ingenuity to medieval monasteries. These aren't stories of shivering misery. They are blueprints for how to stay warm when the world turns cold and resources are limited. The Roman Hippoch demonstrates the power of heating from below. In the first century before the Common Era, the Romans perfected what would become the pinnacle of luxury heating, known as the Hippoch. Unlike modern radiators that heat air, the Hippoch was designed to heat everything in a room, from the floors to the walls, using radiant warmth. Builders raised floors on pillars, creating hollow spaces beneath. Furnaces called prefernia sent fire and hot gases under the floor, which circulated around the pillars and heated the tile and concrete above. For rooms requiring even more heat, hollow tiles called tubuli carried hot air up the walls, creating an enveloping warmth. It was labor-intensive and required constant attention. But walking on a heated stone floor in Rome was a level of comfort, unmatched by most modern systems. The Hippoch shows the value of thermal mass and radiant heat, principles that remain relevant to anyone looking to survive harsh winters efficiently. The Korean Ondol shows heat can be recycled from everyday activities. On the other side of the world, Koreans developed the Ondol, a system that has been in continuous use for over two millennia. Its brilliance lies in simplicity and efficiency. Instead of a dedicated furnace, the heat from cooking fires was diverted through horizontal stone flues beneath the floor. Thick stones, called gudeuljang, absorbed this heat, which then radiated slowly, keeping rooms warm for hours after the fire died. Daily life in Korea revolved around the warmth of the floor. People cooked, ate, and slept on it, showing how heating could be integrated seamlessly into lifestyle. Modern hydronic floors carry the same principles today, but the Ondol proves that even with limited fuel and materials, heat could be harnessed to maximize comfort and survival. The Chinese Kang bed stove demonstrates how to combine living and heating in one. Northern China's Kang is another example of efficient design born from necessity. A hollow brick or clay platform was heated by the smoke from the kitchen stove, turning the entire structure into a heat reservoir. Families slept, ate, and worked on this platform, taking full advantage of every bit of energy from cooking fires. It took hours to heat, but once warm, it radiated heat evenly all night. In regions where fuel was scarce, the Kang reduced consumption by over a third. Its design emphasizes thermal mass and multipurpose heating, providing lessons for anyone preparing to survive extended periods in cold climates with limited resources. Medieval monasteries refined heating for practicality and hygiene. 
After the fall of Rome, much of that advanced knowledge disappeared in Europe. Monasteries became centres of survival engineering. The califactory, or warming room, used fire to heat massive stone slabs, creating long-lasting warmth. Some monks even developed early hydronic systems, channeling water through furnaces to provide hot water and heating simultaneously. These innovations show that even in times of scarcity, humans adapted ancient principles to maintain comfort, hygiene, and energy efficiency. Greek hearths and braziers illustrate the importance of portable and targeted heat. Not every heating system required complex construction. Ancient Greeks relied on central hearths and portable braziers to provide heat exactly where it was needed. A central hearth radiated heat throughout the main room, while braziers could be moved to different spaces. This is the earliest form of zone heating, showing that efficient heat management isn't just about technology, it's about strategy. For survivalists, this principle is crucial. Heating the person rather than the room saves fuel and reduces exposure to extreme cold. Russian and Swedish stoves prove that heat storage can replace constant burning. In Russia, massive brick stoves stored heat for an entire day from a single fire, while in Sweden, ceramic tile stoves refined this further. These stoves were engineered to extract maximum heat from every bit of fuel, releasing it gently and evenly over time. They are lessons in patience, efficiency and design, showing how thermal mass can provide sustainable warmth without continuous labour. The lessons of ancient heating systems can guide modern survival strategies. All of these systems share core principles. They use radiant heat, thermal mass, and efficient energy recycling. They were built with local materials and designed for resilience. In modern survival scenarios, understanding these principles allows you to construct off-grid heating solutions that are energy efficient and reliable. Whether it's using stone or brick to store heat, diverting smoke from cooking to warm living areas, or employing portable heat sources, the wisdom of the past remains invaluable. The real takeaway isn't to recreate a Roman villa in your backyard. It's to recognize the ingenuity in these systems and apply the underlying principles. Ancient heating systems teach us to work with materials, leverage physics, and value sustainability. They also remind us that comfort is not simply about fuel input, but about smart design and long-term planning. If you found this deep dive into historical heating strategies as fascinating as I do, subscribe to the channel for more explorations of survival, history, and forgotten technologies. Share this video with fellow enthusiasts so the knowledge of the past doesn't disappear again.